morning. On behalf of the mayor, city council, I'd like to welcome everyone this morning to our remembrance of the anniversary of September 11th, 11 years ago, and the attacks of our great country. As they bring in the colors, I'd like to introduce our honored guests, Mayor John Nets, city council members Lewis, Meeker, McGuire, and DiLorenzo, County Commission Chairwoman Revels, Commissioners Holland, Peterson, Hans, McLaughlin. Uh, I see we have some elected officials with us, Gail Wadsworth, and I know you're here, so I'm just going to call out your names. State Attorney R.J. Larizza, Judge Attic, Kimberly Week, Supervisor of Elections. We also have Chief David O'Brien and Captain Lynn Catogio and some other members from the SO that we'll introduce uh, as we go through the ceremony. If you would, please rise for the presentation of the colors. And in keeping with the dignity of the ceremony, we ask that you please remain silent and standing. If you would, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uniform personnel, please and arm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would, please join me in welcoming Veronica Scott and Denise LaFrance for the singing of the national anthem. Thank you, ladies. I'd call upon Deacon Jim Casapula to join me for an invocation. Deacon Jim.
Let us pray. Dear God, we remember before you today those whose lives were lost in the tragic events of September 11, 2001, and for all those whom we love but no longer see. As we commemorate the anniversary of the terrorist attack on our nation, continue to look with compassion on the whole human family. We give thanks to you for the selfless courage of those brave men and women who ran into burning buildings and those who labored tirelessly in the rubble for many weeks after. We ask that your spirit breathe new breath into clouded lungs, new life into troubled minds, and new warmth into broken hearts, so that all may feel wrapped in your loving embrace. We ask you to take away the arrogance and hatred which infects our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in the bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to guide our feet into the way of peace. Inspire us with hope in the gift of peace. And when we receive this gift, let us become instruments of your peace in this world, knowing all people as equally loved, lovingly created, and children of the one who gives us life, God the Father, creator of life, and Father to all. Amen. The church says, Amen. Thank you, Deacon Jim. If you would, please be seated. Honor guard! Hands up! At this time, I would like to turn the podium over to Mayor John Nutz. Mr. Mayor. Think about this. Just for this morning, I'd like you to think about the number 11. It's September 11, 2012, and I'd like to share with you some of the ironies of the number 11. It began 11 years ago. What happened to the United States 11 years ago still haunts us. Very early in the morning of September 11, 2001, the twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York City stood strong and tall, side by side, ironically looking from afar just like the number 11. But not for long. By mid-morning, the towers were destroyed by airplanes hijacked by terrorists. Did you know that the terrorists actually planned to hijack 11 airplanes? It eventually came down to just four. 11 years ago, phone calls to 911, yes, 911, reported the following atrocities. American Airlines flight number 11 hit the North Trade Tower and 92 people died on board. Nine plus two equals 11. 11 crew members were also killed on this flight. Eleven years ago, American Airlines flight number 77 exploded into the Pentagon with 65 passengers on board. Six plus five is 11. Eleven years ago, flight United 175 plunged into the South Tower at the World Trade Center and United flight 93 tumbled to the ground in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Eleven years ago, 2,974 Americans were murdered. Before this chaos, we felt safe. Before September 11th, we could travel, feeling secure that we would reach our destination without incident. On the days before September 11th, love for our fellow man superseded hate, and peace prevailed over war. This morning, we gather in Heroes Park to remember this tragedy of terrorism. The horror of September 11th, 2001 never goes away, and the images never get easier to watch. Today, we will continue to be reminded of the profound loss we suffered, but we must take some comfort in the lessons we have learned along the way. I have 11 symbolic lessons for you to contemplate. Number one, America is vulnerable. We've accepted that catastrophe doesn't occur in just on foreign soils. 
It also occurs right here on American soil. Number two, Democrats, Republicans, and independents may have conflicting viewpoints. When it comes down to love for our country, there is no debate. Number three, lives lost on 9-11 were not lost in vain. A greater sense of patriotism and a hunger to pursue what is good and right in the world dominates. Number four, we've come to understand that times change and so does the way we communicate. We now live in a new technological world influenced by social media. If the passengers on the ill-fated 9-11 flights have been able to access smartphones, text messages, Facebook, and Twitter, might the outcome have been different? Number five, before 9-11, we had the ultimate confidence that we could travel by plane, train, or bus without fear of terrorists. Tenuous transportation security will forever complicate our lives. Number six, heroism and bravery stand out above all else. We come to the aid of our own for the sake of unity, no matter what. Number seven, we no longer sweat the small stuff. In the grand scheme of life, most stuff is small. Number eight, we must unconditionally support our military men and women as they risk their lives every day for our country. Number nine, our emergency management systems must step to a higher level to meet the challenges of future international terrorist attacks. Number 10, we've tracked down and killed the man who was responsible for annihilating 2,974 innocent Americans. The death of Osama bin Laden has strengthened our commitment to uphold democracy. Enemies who murder Americans can never hide. And finally, Number 11, when things are at their worst, Americans are at their best. If we learn from these lessons, perhaps we can win something from the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, and not feel as if we're only lost. And next year, when we begin the 12th commemoration of 9-11, perhaps we will be able to embrace hope and healing. I pray that it will be so. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this time, I'd like to invite a few of our dignitaries for the laying of the wreath, so if you would come up. I'm sure Patrick's ready someplace. Mayor Nets, Mr. J. Mayor, Mrs. Carol Sharp, retired Sergeant Major Russell Banks, Sergeant Matthew Brash. We're going to do them all one time. Major Mike Plummer, Captain Mark Carmen, retired patrolman Nick DiPaolo, retired Lieutenant Rich Glover, FDNY, retired Captain Larry Ruggieri, Palm Coast Fire Department.
If you could please rise for the ceremonial ringing of the bells, followed by Judd Zambrano and the playing of taps. Please be seated. I would ask Yvonne Robinson to come up for a, a musical tribute for today. I'd like to say she's one of our own city employees out of New York. Did I ever tell? 
Thank you, Yvonne. This time I'd like to call Rabbi Howard Schwartz of Temple Beth Shalom for a benediction. It was good that we gathered for this inspiring memorial on 9-11. It was moving from the moment the color guard marched in through the wonderful music, the inspiring benediction by Deacon Capula, the mayor's address, and the presentation of the wreaths, the ringing of a bell to remind us. And I would like to benedict you before you leave with words of ancient scripture. I'm gonna do them in three languages. Naturally, I'll end with English. But I want you to hear the original as the psalmist wrote them. And then in the language of a large part of our community in Spanish. As an army chaplain, I looked around one day, standing in Germany, where I had learned to say the same psalm line in German for our partnership units. And then I realized about one third of the people in my unit were Hispanic and deserved to hear it in their first language. So I'm gonna read you the last line of Psalm 121. It's the psalm that says, I lift up my eyes unto the mountains, from whence shall my help come? I think we know as a religious people, whatever our faith, that our, our strength, our inspiration, and our comfort comes from God. The line originally was said, Adonai Yishmor Tzaitcha Uvoecha Meata Vi Ad Olam. Eova Huadara Tu Salida E Tu Entrada Desde Aora E Para Siempre. May the Lord guard your going out and your coming in again, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. If you'd please rise for the retiring of the colors. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as we go today and we remember the events of 11 years ago, please go in peace. Thank you.